okay well um i mean we can we can we can read something we can start with some some reading material if if no one has a suggestion can yeah, Didi, Didi, I have a question, um, but I also, yeah. maybe you were going to talk about uh, Narutam Das Thakur. I wasn't fully listening, so I didn't want to suggest something that already was suggested. Uh, sorry, what did what did you say? Something about Narutam Thakur? Chintamani? Did oh, you sorry. Um, yeah, I'm not really keeping up with the Vaishnava holidays so much. I kept up with Sri the Sridhar Maharajas. I listened to your discourse on um, Saturday, or maybe it was Friday. I don't know what day it is. It's Saturday, Monday. Yeah, it was Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But sorry, your your mic keeps going on and off. I'm, are, are we are we losing something? Yeah. Can you um? We, I was just curious if you can share about Srila Narottam Das Thakur. I was looking at his bhajans in the bhajan book, and I don't know much about him. Oh, well, actually, last Monday was his disappearance, or maybe appearance day. And so we, we spoke for an, about an hour about <laughs> Narottam Thakur. I think that was the only Monday that you missed. <laughs> okay, that's why I'm not used to catching the replays because I'm usually here. Thanks, Edie, for helping me Great. remind myself of what I need to catch up on. Thank you. Um, my next question is about the Gayatri Mantra. Um, we're connected with other yoga groups and um, one of the sadhanas that's recommended by our dear friends um, satsang is to chant the Brahma Gayatri and like, you know, as much as possible, like a thousand rounds of, you know, 300,000 rounds, you know. Like, and uh, I just wanted to know about, um, like, I know uh, Vaishnavas have different Gayatris. I heard there's even like a Tulsi Gayatri and a, like, there's like all kinds of, that's a whole world. And I don't understand it that well. Um, well, I think the main point about these mantras is that they should be received. You know, they should be received from a, from a bona fide guru. So no, no doubt, you know, these, no doubt, you know, these mantras, they still have some potency, but if they're, if we're not receiving them, you know, our, our Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Sundar, Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj, he would always emphasize that, you know, we must proceed in the proper channel, you know, you know, and, you know the Maha Mantra has some has some potency, you know, no matter who is chanting it, of course, but it can only really reveal its full power when it is received in the proper line from a bona fide sadhu, from a bona fide Vaishnava. Otherwise, the full effect cannot take place. And as to, you know, I, I'm not like a scholar, you know, I can't say so much about all of these different Gayatri mantras, but you know, what we can say is that, you know, Gurudev Shilashid Marsev explains that Gayatri, the, the root of the word Gayatri is Ganat Trayate, Iti Gayatri, this phrase defining what is Gayatri. It means that which through singing, one can be delivered, one can be liberated, you know. And, and Gurudev mentioned these, you know, these Gayatri mantras, they are composed according to a particular poetic meter. The word he used was meter. I don't, I don't know if that is used so commonly, um, like rhythm or I don't know. I'm not, is that what Jin Wei's nodding his head maybe? Because I used the word meter recently. The English word would be meter. Like sometimes people okay. will say the melody and the meter. Yeah. yeah, meter is right. Okay, okay, because I used that word recently speaking with one very educated person and they didn't know what I was talking about. So, but you're a musician, so you know exactly what's the right thing. So, yeah, Idiot. like the different Sanskrit, like the actual rhythm of the words, that's the meter. Sometimes people will mistakenly con uh, confuse melody with meter. Melody is the actual musical notes that it's sung in, and meter okay. is the phrasing of the individual, you know, of the. And that's again, that's just the English word. <laughs> right, right. Okay. So you could also say rhythm for people who don't know meter. <laughs> but, you know, they're composed in a particular way. 
And they are, you know, traditionally these mantras, they would only be passed on to, to Brahmins, you know, in the, in the Vedic social system. And, you know, through prayer, through meditation on them, then liberation can be achieved. You know, that is the idea behind them. But, you know, we, you know, we, ultimately we are, what our gurus are giving us, you know, we are, we are receiving that and we are following that. And by their grace, you know, the fruit of that can be achieved. You know, like sometimes people, they, they, they ask, like, why is it that, that women don't receive this guy, this Brahma Gayatri mantra? And, and are we like losing out because of that? No. And, and, and the reason, really, it is like a formality because that Brahma Gayatri, it's traditionally given, it's traditionally connected with this fire sacrifice. It's connected with the giving of the thread, of the Brahmin thread. You know, when, when Brahmin boys are maybe like 12 years old or something like that, like when they're coming of age, then they, they, they like, their Brahmin status becomes realized through this special ceremony and there's a fire yagya and there's the bestowal of the Brahmin thread. And what I've understood is that this Brahma Gayatri, it's connected with the giving of this Brahmin thread. But because ladies aren't given this Brahmin thread, then, you know, in, in, our, in our line of Shilavakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, that mantra has not been given to women. But it doesn't mean that, that we are not that we're not getting, you know, the same spiritual gift that the men are getting, you know. And there are other Gayatri mantras, which, we, you know, we have Krishna Gayatri, we have Gaur Gayatri, we have Guru Gayatri. There are other Gayatri mantras which are being given to us. And but I mean, I think I think the main point here is that, you know, we are receiving these in the proper channel, you know, because people can. You know, we like I hear this Brahma Gayatri sometimes. Like I remember when I was in Thailand, like there was I remember hearing on the street once, like some type of like, I don't know, it sounded kind of like a pop song. And <laughs> and there someone was playing it on the street, you know. You know, you can, you know, people can chant it a hundred times, a thousand times, you know, but if you're not receiving it you know, from Sri, from the bona fide guru, from the sad guru, then what, how much benefit are you going to get from that, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I can give a perfect answer to that question, but, you know, these are just some thoughts that are surrounding that, that issue. Yeah. Yeah, we heard from one Maharaj that it's a Purusha mantra, the Brahma Gayatri, and so that's why it's also supposedly not beneficial for women because the energy clashes or something. It's a specifically male, very male mantra in its essence, the Brahma thing or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know that I know a couple of those recorded. You're probably there's a Deva Pramal who recorded it like a pop song. It's a very popular kirtan, like in the kirtan community. Uh -huh. And then there's also an Indian woman that sings it with this kind of chipper melody. A very popular recording in India too of the Brahma Gayatri song. <laughs> Actually, those are both <laughs> women that published those too. Interestingly. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> so, yeah, and I mean. You know, also Gayatri mantras, they are, you know, there's more restrictions surrounding them. You know, they're they're more connected with the line of Vidi Mark. So they're not, they're traditionally not mantras that you'll sing anytime, any place, any way. But you know, Gurudev's, you know, like you Guru our Gurudev Srila Govindamar specified, you know, you know, you fresh cloth, and he, he said preferably an empty stomach, you know. <laughs> And depending on the time, you know, freshly bathed, and depending on the time of day, you're facing a particular direction. So, you know, clean environment. It's, you know, it's, it's a time to go into some mood of deep prayer and meditation. So, so yes, you know, these things have to be done with proper consciousness and, and respect. And then the Maha Mantra is more liberal, 
you know, the chanting of the Maha Mantra is more liberal. You know, Mahaprabhu emphasized that, you know, any time, any place. <laughs> But certainly there is there is there is scope for chanting the Gayatri Mantra so many times. And we hear Srila Sridhar he mentioned how at one time he was chanting, I can't remember how many times, it might have been a hundred or two hundred times a day. Maybe someone here can remember that. Um, but he mentioned that he was doing that for some, it's mentioned in Centenary Anthology there how he would for he went through some period when he was doing that you know he was feeling this very deep connection with the Gayatri mantra so there's definitely scope for that but it you know it should be something authentic it, it might, as long as it's authentic whatever we do is fine as long as it's authentic you know we're doing it with the proper mood and the proper channel you know so there is scope for for many things, you know, but they should be done properly, you know, with consciousness. You know, if, if you can, if you can chant one Maha Mantra, you know, with full consciousness, if you can chant one Gayatri Mantra with full consciousness, you know, we could get everything through that. <laughs> we could get everything through that, you know, so we should, that we shouldn't get stuck on the, on the, um, get caught up with the, you know, quantity. You know. But if we can have quality and quantity, that is certainly good. <laughs> I, I have another question here. Um, oh wait, Chin Moy is saying, when I was in school, I got a book where it is mentioned that if we can go on with Japam 432 times daily. Aha, uh -huh, interesting. Maybe yeah. that is what Srila Sridhamaraj mentioned. Yeah, that's in, that's in Centenary Anthology. Oh, you're, this is a quote from there. Yeah. Oh, I see. He goes on to say he, he practiced that for uh, some, some time. Oh, wow. 432 times daily. Wow. My goodness. <laughs> wow. How many minutes in one day? <laughs> I would take a big chunk of your day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks, Chin. I had a, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I had a, okay, I had a question. I'm not sure. It may be too elementary, so it was, you can let me know. Um, no, no. No such thing. So <laughs> my, my question is this. In, uh, could you say a few words about the Panchatattva? and the role of the panchatattva and and how i sh we should be thinking about um because i have read a lot and it's very esoteric in terms of each member and and the role they fill or their the expansion they represent um but i'm having a hard time grasping what it what it really signifies hmm. yeah it is it is it is something of a tricky um tricky topic you know and you no know, what i what i understand i mean i would also like to hear i've never heard like a very clear explanation i wouldn't i'd be happy to hear that myself um but what i understand is that they are each member of see one thing we have to remember is that that reality as a whole is comprised of krishna and Krishna's energies. No. So, you know, so so for example, um, you're familiar with some some bandha, some bandha gyan, right? You know, means proper understanding of the, the environment, right? You no, know, so so Mahaprabhu, he, you know, these three terms, sambandha, abhideya, prayojan, right? Sambandha understanding of our proper relationship with the environment, the true nature of the environment, Abhideya, what is the path for Yojan, what is the goal? And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he summarized these, these three categories with, the, with, the term, with these three words. He summarized Sambandha with the word Krishna. He summarized Abhideya, summarized Abhideya with the word Bhakti. And he summarized Prayojan with the word Prema. 
So Sambandha, he summarizes as Krishna. That could be a little confusing, right? Like why, why is he he's saying that, that everything is of the, the nature of Krishna? You know, that, that, al that almost sounds like it could take us to an, an impersonalist idea, you know, like we're all Krishna. <laughs> but, but Mahabrabhu's conception, of course, is a chincha bed abed, that everything in existence is inconceivably one with and distinct at the same time. So, so, but you could say in one word, everything is Krishna. <laughs> if we're boiling it all down to one word. You know. So this, so this Panchatattva, they are representing in, in this sense, you know, different energies of, of the Lord, different energies of Krishna. So, so Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, re is representing, you know, that original supreme divine form of the original Lord. You know, then Nityananda Prabhu is representing his direct expansion. And then Advaita is representing an, an avatar. You know, Advaita, he is in a slightly different, he is also Vishnu Tattva. You know, it's, it's a little complicated. You know, Advaita, so Vishnu Tattva, you know, means of the, of the nature of, of Krishna or Vishnu, that supreme um, expression of divinity, but there are many different categories. So all of these different expressions, these different expansions and expansions of expansions, they are, they come under this one category of Vishnu Tattva. You know? However, within the Vishnu Tattva category, there, there's, a, there's a gradation, there are different divisions. So Nityananda, non-different from Baladev, is, a, is the direct expansion of Krishna and the first expansion of Krishna. And so, and actually all of the avatars, this is an interesting point that we often forget, but all of the avatars, they're all actually coming from Nityananda or from Baladev. You know? And this is a point that Srila um emphasizes in his Nityananda Dwadashakam, his prayers to is it Dwadashakam or is it something else? Anyhow, but his this composition and glorification of Nityanandan, he, he emphasizes this point, you know, that this is the dignified position of Nityananda, who's non-different from Baladev. He is the source of all the Vishnu avatars. So, so Nityananda is representing a direct expansion. Swamsha. Swa Amsha, direct part, direct expansion of Krishna. And then Advaita Charja, he is a, he is an expansion of an expansion. So he's in a slightly different category. And, and we have there, what is that? Um, Pancha Tatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Bhakta Rupa Sarupa Kam Bhakta Kam. I'm gonna, I have. Once, I'm just going to grab Sharanavati because there's a nice clear translation. I have a very clear translation, word for word, that, that we made in Sharanavati. So let me find it. We have a nice, let me find it. Here it is. So, so this, this is one of the prayers that we traditionally chant every, every morning and evening in our programs. So, Pancha Tatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupa Kam. So, so his form as a devotee, so Sri Chaitanya is Krishna. Krishnam bhakta rupa sarupa kam. Krishna appearing in bhakta rup in the form of a devotee. Then his expanded form as a devotee, Nityananda Prabhu, his avatar as a devotee, Advaita Prabhu. And then, and then you have Gadadhar Pandit 
who's representing the Lord Shakti, you know. Gadadhar is representing the, you know, Shakti. You know, we could also say the, the female energy, you know. Gadadhar is, the, is, in the, is in the form of a male, but he is, he is actually the form of Radharani. You know, Gadadhar is representing Radharani in Gora Lila. So he's, rep he's in the category of, of Shakti, you know. And then Srivas Thakur is representing Jiva Tattva. So we have, so we have Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the original Supreme Lord in the form of a devotee. Then we have his direct expansion, Nityananda in the form of a devotee. And then we have Advaita Acharya, who's representing an avatar expansion of an expansion. And then we have um, Gadadha is representing the Shakti, the female side, the female potency of divinity. And then we have Shiva's Thakur, who's representing Jiva Tattva. You know, we are Jiva Tattva. So Shiva's is, and, and it mentions here, or, or in the, well, not here, not in this verse, but in, in the, in the Panchatattva mantra itself, Shiva's Adi. So Adi means like beginning with. So all of, so, rep, so meaning all of the pure devotees, you know, in the, in the category of Jiva Tattva, headed by Shiva's Thakur. You know, that, and that's another point that, that you know, each of these individuals, they're each like representing a category. You know? So it's not that, that each of them is the only one in that category, but they are each you know, representing that, that category. You know? So it's like, you know, you know, that Shiva's Adi means all of the pure devotees. You know, and the Shakti means like all of the different forms of, of the Shakti, the Lord Shakti, you know, who are worshipable to us, you know, Radharani, you know, the, the Brajagopis, like that. Um, so, you know, it is, you know, we are praying to like each of these special potencies, you know, each of these particular energies of the Lord, you know, we are we are praying for their grace, for their mercy. And I'll, I'll, I'll just chant this verse here. I don't know if you're familiar with this verse, Matthew. I don't know if they chant it regularly in ISKCON. I don't know. But in our, we have like our runs and our prayers that we chant every morning and evening. And this is included. So it's Panchatattvatmakam Pishnam, Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam, Bhakta Vatadam, Bhakta Kyam, Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam. I offer my obeisance unto the fivefold manifestation of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, known as the Panchatattva. His form as a devotee, Sri Chaitanya himself, his expanded form as a devotee, Sri Nityananda Prabhu, his avatar as a devotee, Sri Advaita Prabhu, his pure devotees, Sri Vastakur, and so forth and his devotional potency, so Shakti, Sri Gadadhar Pandit, and so forth. So, you know, you could also see this as like, like this Panchatattva is representing like the sum total of the spiritual reality, you know, like, you know, all of the, all of the members, <laughs> of that higher spiritual reality, you know, they are, they are all being, um, you know, like summarized, you know, in this, in this Panchatattva. And they are all coming mercifully to this world and, and, you know, participating and assisting, you know, Sri Chaitanya Dev and his wonderful distribution of Krishna Nam and Krishna Prema. <laughs> I don't know. Is that is that helpful at all, Matthew? Very, very, very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I um, th that was clear and very helpful. Um, I'd been reading and was getting uh, was getting lost. I think in the abstraction of it. So um, that was that was great. Thank you. Oh, good. I'm glad. 
Yeah, it's something that that was confusing me as well for a while and because I haven't really come across like a clear explanation. Um, but but um, actually, I think when we were I helped with working on this on this publication of Sharanagati, this is a beautiful song, but I think going this this translation, I was just helping with editing and stuff. Um, but I think this translation, one of our God brothers made it, it made things more clear to me, actually. Um, so, yeah, often these things, they seem more complicated than they than they are. <laughs> I mean, not that they're not complicated, but <laughs> there's also a simplicity. Um, let's see. I had an O. Oh, I had a question from somebody else too, but they now they said they have to go. So they, I think we just missed them. <clears throat> Could um, I ask a question that maybe no one knows the answer to, but maybe why? Yeah, okay, so why specifically that Panchatattva mantra? Like where in history did that get inaugurated as, as preceding Japa practice, as opposed to the one we just went over, which also is like a Panchatattva mantra? I, you know, I've heard different, <clears throat> I've heard different theories about that. I heard one, and maybe someone else can share something they've heard. I, one person, I can't remember who also these persons yeah, were. But... About the Panchatattva Mantra while chanting Jap Japa. So like when we commit any kind of uh, like ineffective chanting, like we are not attend our chanting properly. So if we chant this mantra, all of the aparad we commit in during the chanting that's automatically removed that's what i heard actually but not sure about it so all of our offenses that we commit during the chanting uh because of that we have this panchatattva mantra yep yes that is that is totally correct rohit At the panchatattva they are extremely merciful and they're also the givers of the Maha Mantra. So therefore, before we chant the Maha Mantra, first we have to ask for their grace. And then with their grace, we may hope to chant the, the Maha Mantra. Is, yes, that is correct. But um, Jayadev is asking, because actually there are different forms if you, in the, if you look um, you know, in, you know, around the time of Mahaprabhu and after, shortly afterwards, there were a few different forms of the Panchatattva Mantra. And so Jayadev is asking how that one in particular was chosen and who made that decision. So I think that's what Jayadev is asking. And I've heard different, I've one person, I've heard from one person that it was Narutam Thakur, actually. Um, and I think that was a reliable person who told me that. But then later, I think someone told me that it may have been Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So I'm not, I'm not sure about that. We have to ask one of our scholars. Either way. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, yeah, whoever it was, you know, we're safe. We're <laughs> yeah, but it, it is kind of funny because actually Gurudev himself, I heard he mentioned how it's slightly awkward. The, we're talking about meters. The meter of the panchatattva. It's slightly awkward. It's not like totally like poetically har and, and harmony or whatever the word is. <laughs> so it's it's kind of funny. But it's really but, funny to watch people try to when you're integrating it in kirtan. The different ways people kind of shove it together and stick right, it in there. <laughs> yeah. Right, to make it sound smooth. <laughs> yeah, because you could also do Jai like Jai Jai Chitanya Nityananda Shri Adwaita Chanda Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gauda Bhakta Vrinda. You know, you mm. could do these little remixes to make it fit, but then it's not that actual Panchatattva mantra. Mm -hmm. I guess that's also mm -hmm. kind of because sometimes I'm also feeling the impulse to chant a different one before Japa. You know, I don't know. So that's why I asked, like, where, yeah, we'll have to research that, where that came in as a. Yeah, we can ask Lalita Madhava. He's yeah. I'll ask him. We can ask him. He's kind of our go-to scholar at the moment. 
But I, I did, one thing I heard was that we were, one of the things we mentioned last week about Naratam Thakur is there was this major festival. Um, it was the first Gaur Purnima festival actually, and it was held in the home town of Naratam, Ketodi Gram. And, um, and, and I think what I remember is that I was told in, at that time, that's when it kind of became an established thing. Yeah. Um, but I, I will ask, I will ask Lalita Madhavit about that, because a few people have asked me that, so. <laughs> um, let's see, I have, an, I have another question here, um, but they've now left the meeting, but we can, they can follow up later. Um, I have a question about the Dham. It's very auspicious to go when it's either Kartik and Gaur Purnima, but it's very noisy in the Dham. How to tolerate the noise, or is it better to go at another time? Mm. Well, I mean, you know, ultimately everything comes down to consciousness, right? I mean, you know, there is there is some special importance given to to time, you know. You know there's special blessing, you know, given at particular times. There's particular vibration, you know, connected with particular times. So this there is definitely some significance, you know, to going at at these particular times, you know, of, of Kartik, you know, Gaur Purnima, you know, but at the same time, you know, we are not ones to become stuck on technicalities, you know, and, and you know, any, any time you can go to the Dham, you know, is going to be auspicious. The most, what's really important more than anything else is Sadhu Sangha. That's the main point. You know, that you are going in the association of the Vaishnavas, that you're going under the guidance of, of a sadhu. You're going under the guidance of a Vaishnava. You know, if, if, you know, if we go like very fixed, oh, we're going at this time to this place and we're doing this and doing that, you know, you, we can perfectly check all the boxes. Um, but if we're missing sadhu sangha, then we're not going to get that much. You know, the most important, the reason why, the main reason why we go to holy places actually is to get the association of the saints, to get the association of the sadhus. That's the most important thing connected with the holy places. You know, you know actually the, the Vaishnavas, the genuine Vaishnavas, they are more potent than the holy places themselves actually, you know, because it is mentioned that the you know the the, the holy places on, on some superficial level they become little contaminated you know because so many sinful persons are visiting there you know then on a superficial level you know some contamination is there but the sadhus you know they can purify that you know they they are so powerful you know in their divine vibration you know hearing hearing shavan hearing Hearing from the genuine sadhu, that is the most valuable thing, you know. So, you know, there's, you know, there's, there's different ways of practicing spiritual life, you know. There's the ritualistic way of practice, and there's the conscious way of practice. So, you know, as a kind of ritual, there are people who go on pilgrimage to holy places in India, and no doubt they will get some punya, you know, they will get some pious credits for that you know but you know what is the real deeper significance of going on these pilgrimages and Srila Sridhar has explained it this way that we are visiting different places we're hearing from the sadhus what are the different you know what are the what are what are the different you know leelas histories that are connected with these sites what is the spiritual significance, you know, connected, you know, with these leelas, with these, you know, holy pastimes, you know, and, you know, how, you know, and these, and this is all untangling our consciousness, hearing, 
the proper conception, you know, of the nature of reality, you know, from the sadhu. That's entering our our headspace, removing the cobwebs. <laughs> you know, that's that's the real significance. So, you know, like on Gaur Purnima, it's the divine appearance of Lord Chaitanya Dev. And it's a seven, it's a seven-day festival, more or less. And and it's about five days of of pilgrimage when we're walking and visiting all of these holy sites. And, you know, you can go there in kind of a mindless way and give your respects at each place and give a few rupees of donation, et cetera, et cetera. Take some holy dust on your head and take some prashad that's been offered to the deity. And, and, and you can, you know, go home and feel like you did something very good, you know. <laughs> Or you can go there and listen very attentively at each place. What is the significance connected to this place? And how, you know, what teachings can be drawn from that? And, and how can I progress in my spiritual life, you know, as a result of that? That's the real significance um, of, you know, visiting these holy places. So, yes, you know, I, ideally, you know, Srila Sridhar she he's, he's mentioned, you know, form and substance, right? You know, ideally, these two things, they match the form and the substance, ideally, they match. You know, if, if it's not possible, though, obviously, we go to the side of substance. So what is the substance of going on parikrama and going on pilgrimage to these holy places, hearing the proper conception in the company of the genuine sadhu, the genuine Vaishnava. So anytime you can do that, you should do that, you know. So, yeah, I mean, you know, ultimately we are practical people. If, if somebody finds it very difficult to go in a very busy, crowded time, then, then you can arrange to go to another time. But the important thing is to, to go in the right association. That's, I think that's the crucial point here. And, and we see, you know, that some missions, they've, they have, because it does get very crowded at these times, because everybody wants to go at these times. And we see sometimes in our mission and other missions, they sometimes organize things. And, you know, so they, some things are done at a slightly different time. So there's, you know, not too much chaos at that particular time. So there, you know, there's definitely some precedent for that. Yeah, so that's that's my answer to that question. And um, yeah, I mean, personally, I've always gone to Gorpurnima at the time of Gorpurnima, but but I am actually considering myself in the future, perhaps going at a different time because it does seem to get noisier every year and more crowded every year. And, and it, you know, and when it's, when it's like that, it, it can become a bit of a distraction, you know, from what you're actually there for. <laughs> actually, one of the sweetest parikramas, um, pil pilgrimages, parikrama means something like circumambulation, and it, so it refers to like going on a pilgrimage and giving your respects to these holy sites. But one of the sweetest Parikramas I went on, it was quite some years ago now, but there was one family from Malaysia and they came and they weren't able to come at the at the time of the, the festival time at Gor Purnima, which is in March. And they came something like maybe it was October or November and they could only get away for like one week or something. And, and so and they asked me to they but, you know, they wanted to, to visit all of these holy places that we normally would visit at the time of Gaur Purnima, but they couldn't come at that time. So they, they asked me, oh, please, can you take us? And, and it was so nice because, you know, it was just a small group and, and you know, we, we were able to go, you know, with some proper mood of meditation and visiting each place and, you know, reading from the words of our gurus and discussing the the significance of these places. And it was, it was very, very nice. You know, it was, it was very, very nice. So, you know, connecting with the current of our gurus, you know, their divine teachings, their divine vibration, that is the substantial thing. 
any time, any place. <laughs> Let's see, we've had Ka Karan, Karan join us from Calcutta. So we have two Bengali Vaishnavas, two Bengali friends with us today. Oh, Rohit, I think, has left. Oh, no, Rohit, Rohit's still here. And we have also Jim, who's joined us. Hi, Krishna, Dandavat, Jim. I think you, you've joined us before. Yeah. <laughs> Nice to have you with us again. Oh, I think you told me you're Bhakta Jim and some call you Jaya Dweta. Is that right? Okay, your mic is off. Hari Bo. Hari Krishna. Thank you. <laughs> I uh, was delayed. I had to run some errands. So I'm very grateful to catch what you just said. It's very, very important. Thank you. <laughs> Great to have you with us. Jai. And, Hare Krishna. And, um, you know, we were mentioning recently, maybe it was on the on Saturday, you know, that point that, that Srila Srila Maharaj made, you know, when Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, he was in America thinking he's going to leave his body soon. And he wanted to leave his body in Vrindavan. But at the same time, he was caught up in all of this busy you know, service, so much preaching going on in America. And so he, this was a dilemma for him. You know, should I, should I leave my service so I can go and leave my body in Vrindavan, which is my desire? Or should I continue my service here and risk leaving my body in America, which wouldn't be my preference? And, and so he wrote to Shula Shudamarj asking for his advice. And Shula Shudamarj told him, wherever you are, that is Vrindavan. <laughs> You know, Vrindavan is ultimately a plane of consciousness and you are there doing your service to your, your Guru Maharaj. So that is Vrindavan. You know, wherever you leave your body, that will be Vrindavan for you. So it always comes back to that point of consciousness. That, you know, Srila Sridhar Maharaj's divine appearance day was this weekend on Saturday. And so we're especially appreciating you know, what teachings he's given us. And, and this is one of the points which he has emphasized so much, you know, that, that everything comes down to consciousness. You know, that, that answers a lot of questions, actually. <laughs> you know, not like, do I do it this way or do I do it that way? Or what time of day or how many times or <laughs> left side, right side, whatever, you know, like, there are many points like this we can get caught up on, but ultimately it come, we're saved by that conception, consciousness. You know? So not, not to totally dismiss the other side, it has its place too, but, but the main point is always that on the side of consciousness. So we're very, very fortunate that we've been given that conception by Srila Maharaj that helps us to stay on the real path you know that that keeps what we're doing real and you know and on some level there's some reality to it if we are emphasizing that point oh and also um ajita krishna prabhu has also joined us today dandavat <laughs> Didi, I'm, I'm very glad you mentioned that. Because I was just listening to Gurudev and he was being asked many questions and he'd always come back to that point. Everything is living within consciousness. Hmm. 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 That's funny, you know, it seems like you often some point of discussion comes up and, and often you've just heard Gurudev discussing that same point. <laughs> it seems like a good sign for all of us. <laughs> yeah, actually on, on this point about regarding the Dham, um, there's, there is one video that you've published where someone's asking, I don't know if it's the same one, but, but um, I heard it a while ago, but 
someone was asking Gurudev some questions about that. Like if you chant the name, I've heard if you chant the Maha Mantra in the Dham, it's more beneficial, you know, and, and Gurudev was, was emphasizing that point in a gentle way, you know, that it, you know, and many of the things that are stated in the scriptures, you know, they are, they are to encourage us, you know, like, like I remember one of our devotees, um, at Anjali Didi, you know, I don't think she'll mind if I, if I say, like, it's mentioned in Bhakti Vinod Thakur's, I think, Navadri Dhamma Mahatmya. like, if you spend three days and three nights in Navadri, you'll become liberated, something like that, you know, and, and so she, and she, she went very early, this was, this was early 70s, you know, at the time, she didn't know who Srila Sridhar was, and by some great stroke of fortune, somebody happened to bring her there, and she didn't she didn't know who he was. Um, but but anyhow, she she originally went to Navadri. She was in Mayapur, but she came across the Navadri because she had this idea from reading Navadri Mahatmya, You know, I have to spend three days and three nights. <laughs> you know, like if I do that, then I'm I'm set. You know. <laughs> And, and uh, you know, and it's also mentioned about like where the place where Srila Sridhar Maharaj established our temple, it's, it's called, it's, it's, it's known by the name Aparad Banjan Pat. And it means the place where all offenses will be excused. You know, and so, and so it's mentioned, you know, if you will, if you will stay there for, one night or something, you'll be excused of all your offenses and something like that. And, and somebody asked our Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj, about that. And he said, yes, that means if you can spend one night here with full faith, you know, then, then you will get that result. You know? So these things, they depend on our faith, they depend on our consciousness. You know, just, of course, there's some value to following in a formal way, but but you know, we will not get the full results if our consciousness is not there, if our faith is not there. So it always comes back to that. This is a really valuable sharing for me personally. Um, on the one hand, I lament very often uh, my apparent lack of devotee association. Uh, my early years of Krishna consciousness were flooded with incredible association. And now I'm kind of on, I'm in out in the wilderness. <laughs> so, but on the other hand, to your point, it allows me to relish how precious Krishna consciousness is. And it encourages me to dive deeper into um, what you're saying, that it, 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 it's only a matter of my consciousness. It, Yes, devotee association is absolutely critical and wonderful, but in the absence of such, Krishna is in my heart, and Guru Dave's alive and well in his words and his books. So, what am I waiting for? <laughs> so, thank you. It's so so true. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing, Jim. And yes, you're absolutely right. I mean. I think many of us feel like that, you know, that we had that like kind of golden period, you know, like I had that when I was in, in, um, I, I lived, I was living in Navadip, um, for about 10 years. And, and so in that, and so our Guru Dave Srila Govinda Maharaj was there for part of that time. And so, you know, having his association every day and, and also there were so many Vaishnava dignitaries who would be congregating there and giving classes throughout the years. So it was a very concentrated time of high level association, you know? And, and, and um, so I also feel some sadness sometimes, you know, like I, like, you know, I've, I've lost something that was so precious, but, but, you know, we have ultimately, you know, we have to keep moving forward. And, and as you've, you know, expressed so nicely, it is a matter of consciousness, you know, and we can still connect with that, you know, through the through the connection, through the channel of consciousness. And and you know, in that period, those periods that we have, you know, we 
we are taking, we've drawn, you know, like I feel, I feel sadness sometimes. So I've lost like that particular environment, but I also reflect and I feel well in that time, I gathered a lot of wealth, you know, and I learned so many lessons and I'm living on that now. <laughs> that's what I'm living off of now, you know, and that's how I'm able to move forward now. You know, that's, that's the value, you know, what is the real value of any circumstance we go through is how much, you know, how much were we able to extract from that? How much were we able to take from that and utilize for our further development in Krishna consciousness? That's what makes it meaningful, you know? So, you know, the, those precious periods that we have, you know, we want to make the most of them, <laughs> And we can, we can hold them in our heart and draw upon them and continue to connect with those, those Vaishnavas too through the, through the channel of consciousness. So, yes. And, and that, you know, that was something Gurudev emphasized a lot that our connection is through service. You know, our connection is, is in that line. You know, so if we are trying in some way you know, to maintain a service connection, we're offering ourselves in some way to our divine guardians, then they are living within us. It is only a question of how much they are able to reveal themselves, like how much are we opening our hearts to that? And how much are we allowing that divine current to flow through us? How much are we able to be conduits know of that to be instruments of that divine flow that's the only question it is it is a living very living and vital thing it, it will be dead if we treat it like it's dead <laughs> and it will be living if we treat it like it is living you know my Guru Dave mentioned that once about the deity, you know, that if we are see, if we are just seeing the deity as some stone, then it will remain stone to us forever, you know. But if we are approaching the deity with faith and you know, with recognition of the divinity, divine aspect there, then the deity will reveal himself to us, you know. So it is the same, you know, the, our connection with our gurus. It's like, like a seed, you know, if you're watering the seed, then the seed will sprout and grow. You know? If we are nurturing, that Mahaprabhu gave that wonderful analogy of the, the bhakti lata bij, the bhakti lata, that creeper of devotion. You know, if we, are, if we are watering it, it will become a beautiful reality. It will grow and manifest gloriously. But, you know, we have to do that work, the watering, the weeding, <laughs> the fencing, we have to do that. And then it will reveal itself to us. But if, it, if we don't, then it will remain dormant. It won't go away. That's our, that's our fortune. <laughs> if we are sleepy for some time, you know, and, and this, and this, you know, if, if, we, if, we, if we have a plant here and we neglect it for some time, it'll just die on us right but fortunately this creeper is not like that you know it'll just wait <laughs> it'll just wait for us and and whenever we're ready to start the process again just it'll pick up from where we left off you know it will just remain in some sleeping dormant position until we're ready so but they're always waiting for us waiting to embrace us and sometimes we're more conscious of that and sometimes we're less conscious of that I had a, a, a talk the other day with Kanu Priya Didi here she's like my, my hostess or she's very kind and devotee here and she, she, was, she said something very profound and it articulated something I feel in myself that she said, she said sometimes I feel like I'm I'm just going forward without seeing anything. But at the same time, I know that Gurudev is always with me. You know, like, like sometimes we're less conscious of our connection with Gurudev and sometimes we're more conscious, but we're just trying to keep putting one foot in front of the other, trying to keep going forward. 
And sometimes we're feeling the connection more and sometimes we're not. Sometimes we're putting more energy into that and feeling the, the result of that. And sometimes, sometimes not. But in any case, you know, we are all going on trying to keep putting one foot in front of the other. So we are, we are fortunate because of that. We're holding on to that lifeline. <laughs> Guru Dev mentioned once, he said, we have got one thread from Guru Maharaj. Like we're holding on to one thread of Guru Maharaj. And if we can do that, we'll be okay. You know, if we can keep doing that, we will be okay. <laughs> We have Son Somya Sham has joined us from Ireland. Standard Sonia Sham Prabhu. <laughs> hey, nice to see you. <laughs> are you are you at your home or are you at the at the center? Well, maybe he doesn't hear me. <laughs> Um, no, I'm at home at the moment. Yes, Vijayananda, he's in he's in India, so um, so he went. He's back next he's week. He's in India. Okay. Yeah, he's in India. Yeah, so he went. To, he was actually in Vrindavan yesterday. So he was oh. there just. He just went for the day for a day visit, and um, so he's there and he's with his family. Then so he's back next week, and so at the moment I'm in I'm at home, but I'm just going into, I um, make up Shri Prabhu in the in our preaching center there in a few minutes. Yeah. Oh really? So you're having a program tonight. Yeah. Um, no, actually, no, just myself and Gopal Sharp Prabhu meet most, most evenings there or that. And then we have our programs Thursday and Sunday anyway. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. So you're there so almost my, every day. Yeah, 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 morning, yeah, yeah, morning, yeah, we would we'd be there every day. And Gopal Sharp Prabhu, he will do um, a small Gita class with one or two people, devotees, depending on the day, just according to what, when they're, who's available. So yeah, so there's, there's something, there's something, something is there every day. And then we have our main program then Thursday and Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh. Very nice. So the centers feel getting some love. <laughs> it is. Although it absolutely is. It is. And it's a really positive feedback from people as well, which is really good. And it's, yeah, there's people coming all the time. So that's really nice. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We have an Arjun here. He's also joined us, friend of Krishna. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, well, um, Jinmoy Prabhu, should we wrap things up? What do you think? As you like, Duty. If nobody would like to add something or another question. Oh, the clock's changed. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, actually, in your. Right. Oh, yeah, that's why Somya Sham has come now. Yeah. I yeah, the clocks have changed here in Europe. So hey, I was I was wondering. I heard something. Somebody on Facebook mentioned that too. Some clocks mm -hmm. have changed somewhere in the world. Sorry, the clock is back. I just came in from work, Tink, and I was on. I was. I thought I was two minutes early. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, it was an hour earlier today. I was matching California time. Yes. Yeah. and soon California time will change as well. Come. Yeah, I think it's just like a two week gap or something, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. I can I know that for next week. Thanks for that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So but I think I think next week it might be the same. And then the week after it'll yeah. it realign like itself. Yeah. Yeah, but 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 the time is always 10 a.m. California time. Yes. So we're we're making California the center of the world. <laughs> <laughs> well deserved. Week. <laughs> All the body. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm adjusting to that. <laughs> yeah. But there was there was one time when when Gosami Marsh was leaving, um, was leaving Navadweep, and and um and he was saying goodbye to Shula Shudamarsh, and Shula Shudamarsh said to him, "Oh, you are going to some remote current corner." Of the Western world, <laughs> you're going to, and he was, and Gosai was thinking, "What? I'm going to California." <laughs> <laughs> but Shishula Shudamarsh, that was a remote corner of the world, some distant, obscure corner, because for him, Navadweep is the center, right? The birthplace of Mahaprabhu, 
you know, that's actually the center of the world. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, well, really oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry, Chintamani does have a hand raised. I don't know how long okay. it's been. Oh, sorry, oh. I didn't notice that. That's okay, Didi. Um, I just wanted to uh, share with you this uh, at the R O High Satsang. You know where we are. You remember Kelly, right? Kelly, uh, come on. How can you even? How can you even ask me if I remember Kelly? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I forgot to acknowledge Kelly, but I. No, it's <laughs> fine. I'm, in, no, in my in my in my what heart, I was acknowledging. I was acknowledging Kelly in my heart, but I forgot. I think verbally oh, to say. I didn't it. say it with words. So the heart, the, the heart's the most important place. To so no, I've, I've been, I've been so, that. I've been so happy looking at the three of you there sitting together in the Ananda veranda, <laughs> like, like a little, like a little piece of, of like home, little piece of paradise, yeah, little, little flowers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to give you news from the Ananda veranda that we have exciting news here to report. Uh huh. Um, we had our first that song, uh, Harinam Sankirtan, out on the streets of Ojai. Down, whoops, we did down, uh, down, oh, down really? Ojai. Wow, yes. that is exciting. Wow, that is that is big. Wow. How do you was, go? Uh, Kelly, oh. Kelly went, um, and Jai Dave and Guna, the four of us. And we, okay. met, um, we met a couple, we met some nice people. Okay, wonderful. Wow, wow, that is exciting. And... Um, the co-host of the Ananda Veranda, or could we say the hostess of Ver Ananda Veranda, um, Karuna Mai Ama is a Kelly's teacher for how many years now? Uh, like it's almost 20 years. Yeah. 20 years she's been with Ama. Her, she was on the altar next to Govinda Maharaj and she, the, uh, the satsang had a, a whole, this is, the, this is the altar from the satsang here at Kelly's. We stayed up till, guess how late? one in the morning saturday night only kelly can get and myself to stay awake past like eight o'clock p.m oh no yeah tell her she spoke like she she went around all she spoke personally with everybody and connected and she wanted me to chant the mahamat we told her that we were gonna do maha mantra in the park and she's like okay you chant it now and she was like you chant Hare krishna she had kelly sing Hari krishna maha mantra to this song for the the whole Zoom. It was super. Any other updates from? No, it was. It was just really a huge blessing, and everyone had a wonderful time. It was really kind of a, a party. We had a party with Alma. It was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So anyway, <laughs> it, it, Jaya Dave has a question, but my last thing about the Alma set song is this whole room. She had like lights set up. It was like a full on stage production house. Like uh -huh. it was the Ananda Veranda was like to the T with like lighting in the zoom part like we had a whole zoom camera program down here and other devotees came and slept over and yeah it was really sweet um anyway thank you kelly for hosting Vishaka and hosting Amma. and jay david was one last question i just have one it could be a quick question or a question for later but it's always been at the back of my head and i never think to ask it but just as it came up say that one takes Harinam Diksha initiation or mantra initiation, and then they reincarnate. So at each incarnation, you have to take initiation. Like, how does that work? Because obviously, we're not going to, most of us aren't going to finish, you know, we're not going to get there in one lifetime. So, yeah, how does that work? Is it like a one time thing that goes through lifetimes, or is it each lifetime you get like a that particular incarnation has to take Harinam, which is more what I'm assuming? Um, I mean, I'm not sure I'm totally clear on the question, but the answer that's coming to my mind is that let's think of it, think of it, think of initiation as, as accepting a guide for your continued spiritual instruction. So, you know, in one, in one birth, you know, we are, we come to a particular level of realization but that, but it is not full. It is not, we have not been able to, we're not at the point of full realization. And so we have to take birth again to continue our development, to continue learning our lessons, to continue purification, development of consciousness. And so in the next birth, we need, we need to continue receiving instruction and guidance. Um, 
So that's what's coming to my mind, like, you know, remove the formalities and technicalities away. And what it's really about is a transaction of consciousness and continued development. And we we need a guide for that. Does that does that answer? Sure. Yeah, that's 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 thank you. But what what was the question, actually? I don't know if I got it really. Well, when I'm putting two and two together, right? Uh, uh, let's see. Right? Like, so one mm. on one level, guru is our guru lifetime after lifetime. But that's also yes. the principle of guru, not the individual incarnation. Right. And then we're taking Harinam, and that's when, in some sense, the Bhakti Lata Beach is, is it, it kind of sparked or whatever. But then obviously, I'm not going to finish in this life. I just no way I'm going back to Godhead in this lifetime unless I'm somehow dragged there by force, like, you know a great guru beyond all of my understanding capacity but i'm not i'm talking like i'm going to be working on this for lifetimes i'm sure you know um but um so then you say like okay say swami maharaj right his disciple he 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 doesn't finish in this lifetime doesn't go straight back to godhead i then next lifetime some other guru will have he'll be born maybe in a devotee family and he'll find another guru in that lifetime and it keeps being I guess the same guru, but I know it's kind of a vague, confusing question. Because in one sense, it seems like meeting the guru is like the beginning, but then. Well, for really some, I mean, for some people, it may be the beginning, but for others, they may be picking up, right? From, right. They may be picking up the thread from their previous lives. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, like some of the disciples of like early disciples of Swami Maharaj, some of them are walking amongst us, you know, they're, right. they're, they're continuing, you know. And also some who met him knew him from before too. Some, Guna knew him right away. She just saw his picture. She already knew who he was. Like, that's my guy. Like, I know it. Mm -hmm. You know, she was on a guru. And I, I've heard a lot of disciples of Swami Maharaj, Sri Swami Maharaj say that, that they already knew him from before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, you know, there sense. there could be persons amongst us, you know, you know, who have been in this line, you know, since since the time of Mahaprabhu, you know. Yeah. They're they're continuing with their instruction, they're continuing with their development and and you know, taking, you know, and according to their degree of sukriti and sincerity, they will remain within the line. You know, and Krishna's in the heart, you know, he will guide that soul, you know, to the right guru who can help them continue on their path. You know? So yeah, for some souls, I'm sure it is like, like you said, that they receive the connection. It's like that initial sparking, first connection. But, but for others, in maybe even most, you know, they're persons who are picking up know where they where they left off i mean like we see some persons who join and it's like like how did you get all this so quickly you know it's it's sometimes astonishing to see that you know how, like i you know like you know like i was i was born into this you know but like i've seen like i've seen some young people you know like like these two young australian friends they you know like teenagers and they're picking picking it up, they're picking up more than some devotees I've seen who've been practicing for 30 years, you know? So that they didn't get that in, in that light. They didn't, get, they didn't get it all like that, no. Srila Maharaj mentioned about, he mentioned about Bhakti Vinod Thakur that, you know, seeing how much wealth, because Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he goes through a whole journey, you know, like showing how he comes to, Shri Chaitanya okay. Mahaprabhu's line. And, but 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 Srila Sridhar said, in light of like his level of realization, you know, it's not possible that he just got that all in one life, you know. So not that we want to compare Bhakti no Thakur to anyone, but that principle is the same. You know, that if someone we see how much realization someone has, then you have to think they didn't just get it all in, in a few years in this life. It's not possible. So so yes, and for many souls, I, I think it is it is like that, you know. And and in that sense, you could say the initiation is a formality, actually. 
again, it comes back to consciousness and, and faith, the cultivation of faith and consciousness. That's really what it's about. So, yeah. What do you think? Does that make sense? <laughs> of course, as always, <laughs> everything, everything that comes out of your mouth. A lot of times clear, I think a lot of people will agree with me that somehow coming out through you more clearly than heard before <laughs> previously. <laughs> so, well, yes. Well, that's very kind of you. <laughs> but we have more, more friends joining us. Suvasani Didi joined. You know, Suvasani Didi, the clocks went back and uh, we're matching California time. So we started an hour earlier in... Um, yeah, and, okay. uh, in, in Europe, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't look at the time. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, my then the no, rest you're of... no, you're joining at the same time. But actually, we're always matching California time, so it's the the time is 10 a.m. in California. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah but Narayani Didi has no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> And Narayani is, is spontaneous. <laughs> and normally, normally we would have been finished by now. So <laughs> but you you somehow were intuitive. You knew we'd still be going today. We're going late. <laughs> I know as I was on Facebook and then I lost you on Facebook, so I had to join on Zoom. Oh, Otherwise, I see, I'm I see. Trying to speak today, I've lost my voice. <laughs> oh. Well, happy to have you with us, Narayani. <laughs> Thank you. Everything you just said with um, Jaya Dave was pretty amazing to hear. I'm like learning some brand new things that um, it's just amazing. <laughs> and I've never heard it like that before ever. So. <laughs> well, Narayani, I'm sure she's picking up from previous lives because she met Gurudev from really young, really young age. Hey, Dandavas, Dandavas. I'm also born into this too. So, you know, it's so much appreciation when somebody comes and they know so much more than I've ever known my whole entire life. So, <laughs> yeah, it's so, very inspiring when you see that, when you see new people come in, you see that strong faith that they have sometimes. It's very inspiring. Yeah, and then I just want to follow them. <laughs> <laughs> Jai, Jai. <laughs> Hi. I see I see some of the children sometimes and and I think like that like I'm just waiting for you to grow a bit older so I can follow you <laughs> <laughs> there are a few I've got I've got my eyes on a few of them <laughs> that's so sweet <laughs> I remember being uh 20 years ago maybe I was with my friend Papa Harini Davidasi and um I think it was her grandson, his name was, or is, um, Gopinath. And she had just moved into this house and we were chanting and the, he was like two years old and he was running around in circles. And then he stopped and he looked at me and I got the feeling like I was being spoken to by a very old wise sage, like, mm. a, like, like a man who was a hundred years old. Mm. And mm. I've never seen such gravity and such clarity and focus in a two-year-old looking at me like that and I realize I am I am in the presence of a great devotee and mm -hmm. and he was two years old he's like this little guy and it was like and I'm sure the mothers in the movement can say this about their kids you know <laughs> they, when they have these children and, and um, the question was once posed to Prabhupada about this whole thing and what about you Prabhupada and what about the Acharyas and he said Actually, the Acharyas never go back to Godhead. They go from planet to planet, awakening the sleeping souls. And, and I thought that what you said about consciousness is they're always in Vaikuntha. They're always with Krishna, mm. re regardless of... And it was 1967. He was in New York with the, some devotees, and there was a garbage strike. And so the trash was piling up. And one of the devotees said, oh, it's, the stench is horrible. And Papa says, why do you say that? It's actually quite nice. <laughs> really? <laughs> it actually, he said, it's actually delightful. <laughs> wow. wow. Because he was, his consciousness was in Vaikuntha. He, he, mm. Apparently, he was in New York, but he wasn't in New York. 
<laughs> and for me, I, I got this, I got this analogy of a submarine underneath the water, but it has a periscope. Uh huh. It goes to nice. the surface, and so it sees the the sunlight and a beautiful sunny weather, but underneath it's very dark. But it's always in touch with the sun because it's like like kind of like Jack and the Beanstalk. And I thought about Jack and the Beanstalk as a kid, and that's where they probably got it was the creeper of devotion. It goes up <laughs> into the spiritual world. <laughs> you know, they, these these uh, archetypes come to us from the Vedic conceptions. You know, mm. <laughs> I like I like that submarine example. I'm going to remember that one. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the little periscope looking around. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> or I should say, Prabhupada and Guru Dave, they're in the spiritual world, and their periscope comes down to us. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it can seem, seem like such a hellish place. Mm, mm. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you for sharing, Tim. <laughs> All right. Well, um, any, any last words from anyone or should we close there? Just our gratitude, Didi, for joining with us. Well, my gratitude to you, Chinmoy Prabhu, and all of the wonderful devotees here. And eagerly look forward to next time. Jai Shlabhati Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. All the assembled devotees Ki Jai. All the world devotees Ki Jai. Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Jai Chinmoy Dev Prabhu Ki Jai. Jai Suvasani Divi Ki Jai. Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Nitai Gaur Premanandi. Jai Vishaka Devi Dasi Ki Jai.